The Honorable Ray Davis. Honorable Danny Johnston. I see my cousin just came in. The Honorable Bernard Nottage. You didn't know he was related to Bishop Moss, eh? <laughs> The National Overseer of the Church of God of Prophecy, Bishop Franklin Ferguson. Bishop Woodley Thompson, Minister Nathaniel Bellamy. All other government officials present and all other church officials present. Can I say now, protocol now being established. I could move forward, right? The Honorable <laughs> and in that same vein, I guess I could say the Honorable X. She's still honorable. She's still honorable. Now you have to forgive me because I have not, I have to take a, a course in protocol. and I think I have to get with him and do a course on protocol because it's, it's very fitting to know how to get it right. Anyway, y'all didn't come here to hear about protocol tonight. I'm here to give reflections. You know, I... When I saw the Bahama Brass Band marching in tonight, I welled right up and I started to cry. And immediately I thought of my father. And I know how proud he would have been tonight to see those men and hear them giving that music with spirit. Daddy served as colonial overseer of the Church of God of Prophecy in the Bahamas for 40 years. From 1935 to 19, the latter part of 1974. And then he went on to serve in the Caribbean as Caribbean mission representative. You know, in the 40s, when he planned and led the church into building the large sanctuary that is situated on East Street and Sunlight Village just down the road from here. When the people in those days saw that building going up, they all thought he was going crazy. You know when Noah built the ark, you know the comments they made. And they regarded Daddy as the Noah in those days. What is this man building this building for? But it showed he was a visionary. That building today serves many activities in the private sector and the government. And incidentally, let me remind you that the 
our beloved Mr. Lyndon Oscar Pendlin by request, he requested before his passing that he wanted his funeral to be held in that sanctuary. It makes us all proud tonight. I'm going to make my reflections very short before I get the reception which you all gave Mr. Allen. <laughs> On behalf of the surviving family of the late Bishop Alvin S. Moss, I wish to thank the Bahamas government and particular the urban renewal and all others who may have been responsible for this noble act of remembering our father in such a tangible and outstanding way. Thank you for this recognition today, which will stand out as a beacon for the uplifting of the Bahamian people for many generations to come. We thank God for Daddy and his contributions and faithfulness to the church, the community, the region, and the nation. I would like to tell you that Daddy was a no-nonsense man. And those of you who knew him would know he didn't smile very much. He was a strict disciplinarian. I want to share this with you. My one brother, Jack, that's the father of Dawn and Dale and Derek and Melanie and he was about 14 years old and he used to beat a snare drum in the band. And you know in the 50s, chewing gum wasn't a common thing, Bishop Woodley. And Jack thought this was a big deal, somebody gave him a stick of chewing gum when the parade was taking off from the church to go to the Western Esplanade. Jack put that gum in his mouth and he chewed that from the church straight to the Western Esplanade. And when he got there, he didn't spit it out. He chew it, come back to the church here. When he got home, Daddy hauled him in the bedroom and give him one beating. <laughs> Jack died at the age of 73 and never chewed gum again. <laughs> but that's the kind of, you see he didn't like that thing. He Jack beating the gum and chewing gum, chewing gum. <laughs> of course my sister Dorinda, the mother of Dr. Benneby and um, the Maris and those, she was an angel. She never got any beating. I recall that. Daddy never beat sister. All but me. <laughs> I got a couple good ones. And one in particular that I will always remember is, you know when you, you're a teenage growing up, you think you're smart. And Daddy asking me some things and and I lied. I really lied to that. <laughs> well, my dear, what the old man put on me. My last birthday, I was 76 years old. And every time I go to twist my tongue to tell a lie right now, I remember that people. <laughs> old man, he never played. But of course, let me say that he knew how to sit with his family and enjoy a good meal of peas and grits and snapper and fried plantain. And he knew how to 
sit in the kitchen and eat that. We didn't have to go in the formal dining room because, you know, that formal dining room for when guests come. We never used to sit around the table, but he knew how to come in the kitchen and enjoy a good meal with us. Despite his seriousness of personality, let me say that when we cried, he cried with us. When we laughed, he laughed with us. He was never too busy to take my children to school and pick them up for me. I sometimes didn't want him to do it. I wanted to sort of go to school and show off with the other mothers with my children. He didn't allow me to do that. But I found out later on that he enjoyed interacting with the young people because he told me one day, you know these young people make you feel young, you know. So that was why he was very, very good at assisting me in taking my children to school. Tonight, I have one regret. That he is not here to see what the Bahamas government and all of you who are responsible have done for him. I know my mother would have been proud. My sister Dorinda would have been proud. My brother Jack would have been proud. But I feel somehow that they are somewhere around him, looking down and smiling at what you have done. Let me assure you that we are humbled by this kind gesture demonstrated here tonight. May God bless you. May God bless the Bahamas. And I am going to add on here, may God bless you, the Honorable Perry Gladstone Christie.